And I think the topic that's circulating right now is one that's about the Miami Heat because we know they just got swept versus the Bucks 4-0. And everybody is wondering whether the Heat are bubble frauds, if they were bubble frauds, if they were a product of that bubble of not playing in front of fans. So just to start off with you, JC, I'll ask, do you think the Heat were bubble frauds? Uh, given what I've seen from Miami this postseason with all the fans back and everybody back and Milwaukee getting better, um, I don't – I mean – what they did last year was phenomenal, but then again, you when you hear NBA players like Jason Tatum and all these other guys saying like, "Well, he doesn't play like that. He he's shooting lights out here. He, he he's like he's becoming a superstar right before our eyes." Like someone like T.J. Warren, good player, good scorer, but on any, but on any given night in the bubble, he was dropping like 30, 35 points per game. So um, I, I do believe that the bubble did help because number one, you're not playing in front of any fans, and I for one, I didn't I underestimated how much that really means. Because my team, like the Nets, they're the number two seed. I wish they would have got the one seed so we can get home court advantage. You know, we have all our fans. So I, I believe that that not having fans made it seem almost like a pickup game. So, and on top of that, you got other players saying that the gym felt like a shooter's gym. And, I mean, just by the numbers, if you look at the offensive numbers in the bubble, everybody's offensive numbers went cr- went up crazy. So um, I think it's a mixture of both. But I'm going to lean more towards, yes, that the bubble did help them because when you had players – playing out of their mind any given night like tj warren or like jamal murray emerging to a superstar well, yeah. in a bubble and then when you see them this season what 21 points per game you know i was expecting more because the bubble what i saw from him in the bubble i'm like wow like he's doing it against this against the lakers against good defenses i would like to see this for the whole season but that wasn't the case so i'm gonna say miami heat were bubble frauds because uh <laughs> i remember everybody was calling them like they had a little cinderella run and you play the same team you played last year. Granted, they have Drew Holiday, but this time you get swept and you just look like a shell of yourself from there. So I'm going to lean more towards, yeah, like that That was the bubble definitely did help them. And how about you, Ronnie? See, <clears throat> I'm a little, I'm like conflicted, right? Because like, yeah, we could talk about, oh, Miami's a bubble fraud, but that means every other team got to be a bubble fraud too then. Like, all right, you want to give, you know, Mickey Mouse ring to the Lakers? All right, cool. That's whatever. But what stood out to me from Miami was that they were the only team in the East to not like add anything in the off season. Very true. So the Bucks got Drew Holiday, mm-hmm. Philly. I mean, Philly got Seth Curry and Danny Green, right? Mm-hmm. All right. So two shooters to help them out. Yeah. Brooklyn. I mean, they were getting KD back in the mid season. They got James Harden and the Bucks. They got uh PJ Tucker halfway through the season. Mm-hmm. That was My, huge. Miami <laughs> didn't Miami didn't help themselves, you know? So it's like, mm-hmm. all right, yeah, you went to the finals last year. You got the same team. But all the other teams that you beat last season got better. Yeah. So it's like, what are you gonna do? Mm-hmm. Like, so I think that's like, I, that was it, bro. Miami didn't want to help themselves. And yeah, all right, Victor Oladipo. Yeah, that's cool and all, but like, he got hurt. He got hurt. And so, what are you gonna do? I love Jimmy Butler. I think he can be, you know, the best player like on a championship team. I still believe that because he's so like dynamic, uh, offensively and defensively. But like, bro, Miami didn't help themselves. Like, they just shot themselves in the foot, not adding anyone to a finals, you know, team. Yeah. And you're right. And, and they lost Jay Crowder. I was just about to say Who's that. been big. huge for yeah. Phoenix this season, even yeah. though he's been off in the playoffs. And as soon as they traded Kelly Olenek, he turns into Dirk Nowitzki with the Houston <laughs> Rockets. And he's going crazy. And Oladipo, he, that was their big slash move. Of course, you know, the, the reason why I think it's so it's so fun to pick on the Heat right now mm-hmm. is because, one, they're down. Yeah. Two is that they were talking. They're fans. They were talking <laughs> a lot of smack in the offseason. <laughs> I mean, not only towards other fan bases, but they also were overhyping their own players and overvaluing them. Like Tyler Hero and Duncan Robinson, I call them the yeah. Barnacle Boys. They didn't. <laughs> they didn't want to trade the Barnacle Boys for James Harden, Mister Fear the Beard, who's in Brooklyn right now, who's yeah. a pillow part, going That's crazy. Had 18 assists the other night. Thank you, Miami. And they did not want to <laughs> trade for James Harden because they felt Tyler Hero was too much of an important piece. And that that's my only knock with the Heat and what they were doing. But even when like you look at their record this year and last year and their seeding. This year they finished as the sixth seed, I believe. Yes. Uh, yeah. Last year they finished as the fifth seed. Mm-hmm. But I'll be honest, last year they played a beautiful brand of basketball. Mm-hmm. Like watching Miami felt like a treat to watch. It felt like watching a Spurs team, yeah. the way they passed the ball. 
But this year they went they they were the 25th ranked offense. Last year they were the 15th ranked offense, and I'm not sure. I think they kind of figured out kind of Bam a little bit more and how to yeah, guard yeah. him. Bam fell off. Yeah, and up. and I think that's what kind of you know led to the Heat's downfall. But all in all, you know the team this year felt much different. Like last Definitely. year. Last year, I picked the Heat to beat the Bucks in the playoffs. And at that time, that was kind of a hot take. And the reason I did was because the Heat felt really special last year. Mm -hmm. So to answer the question, I don't think they were bubble frauds. You know, I think okay. that you could say they were, and I wouldn't disagree. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I think that last year's team was just so much different. And it just felt a little bit different this year. Miami feels stale and that heat culture, everybody loves to praise. It wasn't there. <laughs> no, it really wasn't. It wasn't there. Nah, the heat bro. culture, they don't get swept by 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 Milwaukee. I mean, you know, I'm, they could have at least won a game if they yeah. really have that type I of I mean, culture. they almost did. They did. I'm going to be honest. I think them losing that game, which was out of the rest of the games, that was the only winnable game they could have won. And, you know, they blew it. Jimmy Butler had a bad game. And once you go down, once you lose like that, once you try your hardest, you play you play a bad game and you only lose by two points yeah. on a game that you should have won, I think that game demoralized them as a team. Because yeah. that was the closest game of the series. It was a two-point game. I think it went down to like a, a missed game winner, went into overtime and everything, if I'm not mistaken. And it's like a game like that, I think had Miami won that game, the series would have been completely different. But them losing that game... And then getting blown out the rest of the way, I just felt like that one game just demoralized them as as just the whole unit. They didn't look the same after that. Like, I don't know how you guys felt. Like, I felt like game one, like, kind of took their hearts out. I mean, not to mention, they were going up against a team that probably has the biggest chip on their shoulder. Definitely. They Milwaukee. wanted that matchup. Mm -hmm. For real. So, I mean, like, after game one, I think while it demoralized Miami, mm -hmm. I think that, like, like, pumped some stuff into Milwaukee. Definitely. Like, yo, like. We got to step up. We are not about to be first round exits like yeah. against a team that beat us in the bubble. So I think I think that was like the major, it, it, major case. It, it, it was huge because like it was almost like like a legacy game in the way for like Giannis and Coach Budenholzer. Like mm -hmm. if you you know if he loses that series, he's gone. Yeah, like he's out. And if Giannis loses that again, that's going to be demoralizing to his career because you got Drew Holiday. You got Chris Middleton. You acquired PJ Tucker, who he loves, who's a very, very Brent good Forbes defender. Too. Brent Forbes, Brent Forbes, like you oh, had, yeah. like you Bobby had the Portis. team. Bobby Portis, he's been great huge. off the bench. Like so, in 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 more ways than not, I felt like Milwaukee was like, for lack of better a term, just more hungry this year. You know, you lost to this team in five games, and last year I was on a podcast and I and I thought Milwaukee was gonna win in five, <laughs> but it was the other way around. So I I just felt like. Milwaukee having their backs against the wall, them wanting this matchup, and this being a legacy and a job and, and a coaching job on the line just helped them. Yeah, and for you know they got the job done. They got them out of there in four. Now they're waiting for the winner of. I mean, we know who's going to win, Brooklyn. <laughs> now they're waiting for Brooklyn. They got more rest and they're ready. This is a good team. Yeah, oh. and you know as great as the as great as the Bucks were and as bad as the Heat were, I think uh -huh. you know it was more about Milwaukee just being that great of a team. Because of all the acquisitions they made, it allowed Giannis to play differently yep. and for Mike Budenholzer to game plan differently for the Heat. Mm -hmm. And I feel like their offseason additions get very slept on. And, you know, Definitely. we were talking about it the other day. And before the pot started, you guys are, are, were both talking about how you worried about Milwaukee. Yeah, rightfully yeah, so. Yeah. Because Milwaukee is going to be a tough matchup. Very because tough. Not only can they <laughs> score with the Nets, but they can defend with them too. Well, they can defend, defend better way than us. better. Yeah, no, way better, bro. Yeah, they can <clears throat> defend way better. And since DiFincenzo's not there, we'll see who starts and plays for him. I think probably Connaughton will because of his yeah. defense. Pat Connaughton, yeah. But, you know, that's the thing, man. I think the Bucks were just a great team this year. Definitely. And that's why that's what happened to the Heat. So maybe you can call them bubble frauds. I think last year was a little bit of a magical run. I mean, Jimmy Butler played out of his mind. Tyler Hero for a rookie was like next level amazing. Yeah. You don't expect that from a rookie. Yeah. And then these playoffs, and then Duncan totally Robinson couldn't off. miss. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And also that's another thing. Like Duncan Robinson was a brand new contributor to that heat team uh -huh. last year. And now teams had the chance to look at film and figure him out yeah. and how to play against him. Yeah. And that definitely, you know, went against what the heat were trying to do. And then Kendrick Nunn fell off too. Yeah, Kendrick I mean, Nunn fell in, off last year. Yeah. Like he, he mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, huh, I, I don't know if it was just, I mean, I agree with you guys in the sense that their team definitely got difference. They didn't add anybody while everybody got better. But it also doesn't help that Tyler Hero coming off a of rookie of the year caliber year, yeah. stepping up in the postseason, he takes a step back. Duncan Robinson, they figure him out. 
then they have like a, a point guard problem. Like Kendrick Nunn, supposed to like he he came on the scene last year, was a good player, fell off towards the towards in the bubble. So they had a lot going against them. And then like I like like we all agreed, lo- them losing Jay Crowder, another front line defender who can you know space the floor and defend well. It, it just I wish I I wish I would have seen it coming, but I just thought this Miami team would have just given a better effort just off what they did in the, in the bubble last year. 